Welcome to our lecture online and our next uh, set of lectures on chemistry are going to deal with the electron structure in atoms. Now that's a big topic and a topic that requires a little bit of understanding of some other things and so let's delve right into those. The first thing we're going to do is try to figure out what electromagnetic radiation is. If someone came up to you and says, what is electromagnetic radiation? Right away you probably would start thinking along these lines and say, oh I know what that is, that's radio waves and microwaves and infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet radiation, x-rays and gamma rays, and yes, you would be correct. Those are different forms of electromagnetic radiation, but it doesn't really answer the question. What we might know about these things is that radio waves, they have very long wavelengths and very low frequencies. So long wavelengths, we use the lambda symbol to indicate wavelengths, and that would be the length from the top of one wave to the uh, maximum of the other wave and it has low frequencies meaning that the radio waves come in at very low frequencies, very low occurrences as they, drop, as they come by. Microwaves have shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies, infrared shorter wavelengths, higher frequencies and so forth so by the time we get to gamma rays they have very 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 tiny wavelengths and very high frequencies. Now, you might also realize that the ones on the right side of the board, x-rays and gamma rays and ultraviolet radiation, that those are typically very dangerous to life. If you're exposed to those, that kind of radiation for a very long period of time, you will have very bad ill effects, health effects from that. As opposed to the ones on the left side, those are not dangerous. And yes, microwaves are not dangerous to you, so if your microwave oven were to leak a little bit of radiation, that would not be a problem at all. But again, it doesn't answer the question, what is electromagnetic radiation? So let's try to figure that out. Well, first of all, what's really interesting is that if we have a charged object, so let's say we have an object that has positive charges on it. And of course, you can think of things such as maybe the nucleus of an atom, because the nucleus of an atom has protons in it, and so therefore it would be positively charged. The interesting thing about objects that have an excess of positive charge or, in the, for that matter, an excess of negative charge, either way, those objects affect space around them in a very strange way. But what do we mean by space around them? Well, we don't mean the air per se, but we simply mean the emptiness of space. So we go far away from the Earth, out in space, where apparently there would not be any atoms or any gas or any dust or anything like that, simply we'd be way out in space away from everything, any nearby galaxy or anything like that, all you have there is space. But what is space? Well, space is a very interesting thing. For one thing, uh, what happens is, let's say we put an object in space, like a star or a planet. What does placing a star in the emptiness of space do to space? Well, it affects it by bending space around it into the fourth spatial dimension, causing the effect of gravity. So when you place another object nearby, like a planet, near a star, and since the star has bent space around it, the planet will have this seeming attraction towards the star, which we interpret as the, you know, the attraction of gravity. Well, charged objects seem to do something similar to space. When you place a charged object in space, you create what we call an electric field. Now, an electric field, what is that? Well, it's an influence to space around it, so it does something to space around it. We don't quite know what it is, but placing a charged object on space causes some influence in the space around it in such a way that when we place another charge nearby, let's say a negative charge nearby, just like a planet seems to be attracted to a star, a negative charge seems to be attracted to a positive charge because of the influence that it has in space around it. So it creates a seemingly force of attraction between two charged objects when they're obsolete charged, or if you place a positive charge nearby this positive charge, it will feel a force of repulsion. So there's some effect to space that causes other charged objects to react to it, either by feeling attracted to it or by being pushed away from it. So now what happens when you take a charged object like this, that creates an electric field around it. What happens now when you take that and you start moving it back and forth and back and forth? 
So notice that these electric field lines are just simply a, a representation of the field around it. We, again, don't know exactly what charges do to space, but as you move the charged object back and forth, that electric field that's around the charged object goes back and forth and back and forth, just like the charged object. And so what happens then is if you're an observer at some distance away, from this charged object, so this is you looking at this charged object, which may be many miles or many millions of miles away, but if you take this charged object and move it back and forth, this field, this electric field, will go back and forth as well, and when you start moving a field back and forth, you create a wave action. So that, that causes this electric field to emanate away from the charged object as a wave. It's very much like the following thing. Let's say, for example, that you have a pond, so here, let's say you have a pond, and you stand by the side of the pond, and uh, you throw a rock in the pond. Bang, the rock goes in the pond. What happens? Well, if you imagine the surface of, of the pond to be like space that's undisturbed, but now you throw, throw a rock in it, it plunges through the surface layer of the water, and it displaces that surface layer. It kind of indents it, and then when it restores itself, it begins to go up and down, and that up and down causes a wave action to move away from where the rock entered the water, and you end up with little ripples around the rock that then emanate out as waves. This is exactly the same what happens to space. You put an object like this that is charged in space, and now you bring it back and forth like that. It's almost like a rock going into the water, causing the water molecules to be pushed outside, and they start going back and forth like that. And as space goes back and forth, just like the water molecules go back and forth, they emanate waves, like the water waves on the surface of the, of the water, the ripples that move out from the place where the rock ended up in the water. And so these electromagnetic waves are apparent by the movement of the electric field around an object that gets moved back and forth. Wow. So it seems then that electromagnetic radiation is simply a disturbance of electric fields that then emanate out, and the speed, of course, at which they emanate out is equal to C, which is called the speed of light. And all electromagnetic radiation moves away at that speed, and that speed happens to be about 186,000 miles per second, which is quite fast, or in kilometers per second, about 300,000 kilometers per second. So, electromagnetic radiation is simply the radiation that flows away from a charged object that moves back and forth. Now, if you move the object back and forth slowly, you create radio waves. If you move it back and forth more quickly, you create microwaves. More quickly again, infrared waves. Very quick, visible light. Even quicker than that, ultraviolet and so forth. So it's the speed at which the object that is charged moves back and forth that causes electromagnetic radiation to exist. Now this isn't the only way in which electromagnetic radiation can be formed. It turns out, for example, in X-ray machines, we don't cause X-rays by wiggling charged objects back and forth, we cause x-rays by accelerating charged objects. So it doesn't have to be wiggling per se, but let's say we have an, a charged object like this, and then we push on it with a very high force so that it accelerates really fast away from where it is. That fast acceleration also causes electromagnetic radiation to be emanated from that. So x-rays, for example, and x-ray machines are caused by this very fast acceleration of charged particles. So again, we see that, again, if you have particles moving back and forth that are charged, that is basically they're constantly accelerating, or you can have this linear acceleration of particles, and you produce electromagnetic radiation as well. So why do we study electromagnetic radiation so that we can understand the electron structure in atoms? because there's a very close relationship between electromagnetic radiation and electrons and how electrons interact within the orbits of atoms due to the properties of electromagnetic radiation and how similar electrons are to this kind of radiation. So in the next so many videos, we'll go ahead and try to tie all it up so you have a full understanding how the atom is structured based upon these characteristics of electromagnetic radiation and how, how electrons react in atoms.